so I, we, we were talking about these aura rings and one of the measurements is your HRV and the, the higher your HRV, the better your recovery. Um, and so is, is there a connection between what happens to your brain and what happens in your heart then? Yeah, the brain, we can think of it as a CPU of the body. And there's so many downrange benefits when brain function starts to improve and as an engine, it starts to operate more efficiently. Um, we've uh, been observing that there are uh, a number of different areas that improve, uh, in some cases unexpectedly. And so HRV is interesting. We got an unsolicited call from uh, somebody at Whoop. We actually acquired about a dozen devices uh, to track people's sleep quality. And we've noticed in a lot of our patients, the feedback we got was, I'm getting the best sleep I've had uh, in years. And so we wanted to use these Whoop devices to, and, and for those who are not familiar, uh, these whoops are wearables, they're on your wrist and they're measuring um, a number of different biometrics, uh, heart rate, heart rate variability and sleep. Uh, we were interested in the sleep component, um, but this unsolicited call from one of the whoop reps was telling us that we're seeing big changes in HRV in your, in your patient population. And so we very quickly worked to get smart on what HRV was and, and we've learned that um, it's really a proxy for emotional resilience, but it has a lot of applications uh, to the athletic world as well. And so that's something that's gained a lot of interest. We're embarking upon uh, some work with uh, the Air Force to um, look at that a bit more closely. Um, and so uh, that'll be interesting. One of, one of the partners in that uh, initiative is uh, Aura Ring. And so we're gonna capture data uh, through these wearables and. Uh, I think in a year or two, we're going to have uh, much richer and granular data with which to look at how that's impacted. So do you think that that's a side effect of, of, the, of you improving how your brain's firing, which improves your sleep, which in turn improves your HRV? Or is there a, almost like a direct connection in some way? Or do you not know at the moment? I think we're still learning. It's, we've had some people mention this is sort of um, the dynamic with, with men, what many people would call flow state. Um, for us, really, we're trying to optimize brain function, make it work more efficiently as an organ. Um, there is an intrinsic relationship between the heart and the brain as the two electrical organs in the body. Um, uh, my intuition is that improved sleep quality has a lot to do with the changes in HRV. Uh, one of our initial studies uh, we did pre- and post-treatment assessments using something called the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, or the PSQI, and we found a significant separation between our placebo group and our treatment group in terms of the sleep quality that was being measured. And so we've since then uh, gotten some in-lab polysomnograms, and we've seen uh, that with the treatment, people are getting higher quality sleep in terms of sleep architecture, meaning they're getting more REM sleep and slow-wave sleep slow wave sleep, stage three sleep. Uh, and as a byproduct, uh, we're seeing improvements in HRV. So I think there is this whole ecosystem that changes uh, when we can improve uh, significantly one area. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of downrange benefit that we're starting to observe as well. And, and you mentioned that there's, so you said the brain, because your, your colleague took me through and we did this brain scan and he said, what, what that's doing, that's measuring electrical activities, essentially, is it, was that correct? Correct, yeah. and, and And then the, the heart is also an electrical, is, 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 is it a, it's a similar type of organ, like an electrical organ, is that right? Am I, am I in some it, way? <laughs> it is, yeah. So there's, uh, there's kind of um, two nodes or two, two generators within, within the heart. Um, uh, it's, it's called the sinoatrial node, the atrioventricular node. And so these are what uh, create impulses with which your heart uh, can beat. Um, the brain has its own oscillator generators, and, uh, but there's a relationship between the two uh, that's an area of very intense study right now. And so uh, I, I think we're still learning how all those relationships are intertwined. Uh, but we've certainly observed as we improve brain function, there are these changes in HRV. And um, I, I think one uh, doesn't necessarily improve without the other. Somebody has to be taking care of um, their own physical fitness to, I think, really optimize those gains. Uh, but as one might expect, you know, all these systems are interrelated. And, mm -hmm. and those relationships, I think, are we're, we're just starting to learn um, 
how that all uh, plays together. Mm, it's fascinating. I, do, do you have, without using science, and I know you're a doctor and with what you're saying here, you, you've got to follow the science, but do you have any, if you were to sort of, you know, make your own like unqualified connections? Because um, it, it, for me, it's fascinating, like how the heart and the brain, or if the heart and the brain have any kind of connections and if they're, and, and you know, like they, they have very different functions, but, but would, do, you, do you feel that, that there is also that, you know, some sort of direct correlation between how one, one can affect the other directly? Yeah, yeah. I think that, is the, that relationship is, is becoming pretty well established. To give you a kind of a physiologic basis, um, your brain is 2% of your body weight, but it's 20% of your caloric consumption or your energy consumption. How much? What percent? 20%. 20%, wow. Yeah, so it's a very kind of energy-hungry uh, organ with a, a pretty large demand. And so if we can improve the efficiency of the organ, um, you can almost think of it, it's an imperfect analogy, but um, the efficiency of an engine in a car. You know, if it no longer has that kind of energy and oxygen requirement, um, the demand from the heart also improves. And so all these things um, sort of work very closely together. It's more classically uh, medicine. We talk about the relationship between heart and lungs um, mm. because there are a very well-established feedback loops uh, in terms of oxygen debt and then cardiac demand and cardiac output. Um, and we're starting to see that um, you know, the neurologic system is connected in the same way. <laughs> and so uh, it's... I think a constantly evolving science, and uh, we're probably have only uncovered you know, maybe a couple of percent of what there is to learn about the brain. Um, you know, we we're talking earlier; we're learning. Uh, it seems daily and weekly there are new studies and um, discoveries that are happening, uh, where it may change the way that we think about things. Uh, but there's clearly um, uh, new science to uh, show this relationship, and uh, I think. Uh, in the next decade, there'll be a lot of uh, innovation discovery around that. 